You're listening to Mind Pump, the world's number one top downloaded fitness, entertainment, and fun podcast uh, on anywhere. It's a global phenomenon. In this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked uh, by listeners and viewers just like you. Uh, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about what happened in our lives. We talk about studies. We talk about fitness. We have a lot of fun. Today's intro portion was 39 minutes long. After that, we answered the fitness questions. By the way, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com and just fast forward to your favorite part if you don't have a lot of time. Otherwise, listen to the whole thing. We opened the episode by talking about Justin's collagen legs. Oh, hey, yeah. He feeds the dogs. Drink them in. Then I talk about my son falling down this weekend. He's okay, but it was a little bit of a scare. Uh, Adam got shadow banned on Instagram. Means he must be doing something right. He's one of us now. We talk about social media being in hot water uh, for censorship. Um, I talk about how the baby hasn't come yet. We are waiting any minute now. Mm. Um, then Adam talks about how he ate an entire box of Magic Spoon cereal. Now, this cereal tastes delicious, like the cereals remember as a child, but the macros are incredible. No sugar, high protein, low-carbohydrate cereal. In fact, an entire box, a whole box of Magic Spoon cereal is 770 calories, 77 grams of protein, and no sugar. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Sounds good to me, Sal. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount um, on any box. So just go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump. Uh, then we talk about uh, that I'm a buffalo right now. A little heavy. I think <laughs> I'm just trying to follow. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Then we talk about this guy on Instagram called the Iranian Hulk, um, and we talk about other human anomalies. And then we talk about Doug's getting super drunk story. He was okay, though, because yeah. he used Z-Biotics. I love drunk Doug. So Z-Biotics is a product that you take before you drink alcohol, and it, it's comprised of genetically modified bacteria that produce an enzyme that that break down the negative byproducts of alcohol. So you drink and you wake up the next day feeling okay. You feel actually pretty good. In fact, uh, you got to listen to Doug's story. It's pretty crazy. It's great. Zbiotics is a breakthrough supplement. Uh, it's patented. There's nothing like it anywhere, and it really works. It really does. Um, if you want to try it out, go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump for 10% off. And then we talk about GMO wheat being approved in Argentina. Then we answered the questions. Here's the first one. Is it okay to do just compound exercises? Uh, in other words, do no isolation movements. Next question, what are the best sources of carbs? The third question, this person says, look, I see a lot of professional athletes that look a little chubby. Would they be better athletes if they got leaner? Um, and then the final question, this person wants to know if there was ever a time that we felt like we failed as trainers or as leaders. So we tell some stories there. Also, this month, we took two of our most popular programs, MAPS Anabolic, a full-body uh, muscle-building, metabolism-boosting program. Uh, it's a three-month-long program. We took that workout routine, that whole program, and we combined it with the No BS six-pack formula, which is a core ab oblique training program. Took both programs, retailed at $174, and made the price only $59.95. That gives you lifetime access to both programs. It's one-time payment. You also get a 30-day trial. So when you enroll in the program for 30 days, if it doesn't blow your mind, return it for a full refund. If you want to take advantage of this uh, tremendous promotion, again, MAPS Anabolic and the No BS Six-Pack Formula, go to mapsoctober.com. Again, that's maps, M-A-P-S, October.com. <laughs> That's a. <laughs> Sounds like a Halloween uh, you guys are, <laughs> chuckle. This is a scary episode. <laughs> Adam's about to sing. Get, get ready. <laughs> He's going to freak you out. Mind your ears. Ah, they will bleed. Uh, Dude, shit. Adam, did you know Justin is a collagen protein making machine? What? What does that mean? Well, the dog always licking his legs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's licking up the, Dude, that, the collagen flakes. Every also. time, like all dogs, they just want to lick my legs. Uh, what's up why? with that? They can taste the cheese. That's why. Is that what it is? <laughs> yes, it's, it's, I got that excess cheese ooze <laughs> just coming out of my skin. They know there's a there's a bone underneath yeah. inside somewhere. Or there's yeah. a 50-50 shot. You still have remains from breakfast somewhere around <laughs> you. Yeah, that's highly likely. <laughs> Bro, it's all over my body. Literally, your dog was sitting there just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just, just It's so annoying. Death. I'm like, just because I'm wearing shorts. Yeah. <laughs> they just they want to eat my legs. You're like, higher? Yeah. Uh, Higher? Yeah, it's uh, delicious. Disgusting. Dude, I had a scare this weekend. Mm. 
I was, uh, my son was outside on a skateboard, and uh, I go inside real quick, and I hear him yeah! scream or whatever. Oh, God. So I run out there, and he's on the ground. And, uh, you know, my son's f- so funny. He, if your emotions were, if there's a scale, right, one to ten, right? One, you're sleeping. Yeah, he's two to four. He's, he just lives there. Yeah. It yeah. never goes above, never goes below. Oh. So sure enough, he's on the ground. He's pale. Obviously, he's in a lot of pain. Right. He's yeah. holding his arm. He's like, oh. Did he yell like this? Oh. No, no. First, he's like, ah. No, he goes, help. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I run out yeah, there. Yeah, because I can't imagine him doing like a real high. Like, yeah. ah. No, it's no. Just like, uh, yeah, unless his voice cracked, right? Yeah. So I run out there. I'm like, oh, I see him holding his arm. I'm like, what's the matter? You all right, buddy? And he like lifts up his sleeve, and his shoulder was dislocated. So, well, really? Yeah. So it was like, oh, gnarly. Like you could see the bone. Not a huge. It was more of a subluxation, like a minor uh, dislocation. Yeah, just out, out of place. So, so you, you could see lethal, it out. Did you lethal weapon him? No, I didn't. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could. Did Mel Gibson him? I don't know if I could. Oh, really? You pull it the wrong way. Yeah. Just put it in, on, you know, yeah. pull it out. On the, you just slam it in the side of the garage. Yeah. Tr- chicken, oh, like a yeah. chicken wing. Yeah, just, <laughs> oh, shit, I, I pulled your arm off. Yeah. No, I saw it pop out a little bit, and so I'm like, oh, shit. So I run inside to get, you know, my shoes because whatever. So then he, like, moved his elbow a little bit, and it popped back into place. But his whole, the, it, when he looks at his shoulder while it's out, he goes, this is exactly how he says it. That doesn't look right. Like that's his, that's his, <laughs> that's his tone. That's not everything. where that's supposed to be. But dude, as as I hate it, I hate see, when I see my kid, especially if I see that there's an injury on my own kid. Yeah. In the moment, I'm like cool. As soon as it was over, I was like affected for like an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just walking around like. Oh. I know. I'm always going through that. With my youngest. Oh. He just put me through the ringer with that like all the time. And, and and it's even if we're playing soccer or whatever, he just goes so hard that like he'll end up like either on his head or like in some weird entangled position. Oh, yeah. it's the worst feeling ever yeah. when something like that. I'm nervous for that day. Happens. That, that hasn't really happened to me yet. That's happened to Katrina three times though now. So she's that's the big. You got to show up after. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the big joke around the house right now. Is that you know, man, he's been he's hurt himself three times now. All on your watch. She's not watching him enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not careful. <laughs> no, don't say yeah. that. Yeah. Make her feel bad. You know, her comeback is it's because you're a helicopter dad. That's why. <laughs> like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that. You know, that's not true. <laughs> oh, it's the, yeah. it's the worst. Hey, man. I got something to ask you, Sal. Explain it. So I, you know, here's some conspiracy stuff. Here we go. Oh hell yeah! Wait, Wait you're coming I in know. with the conspiracy. Piercy? Well, okay, so, I love this. <clears throat> so I, maybe it's because you guys get in my head, right? Mm. So and maybe it's with all this news that with all the shadow banning and the, mm. the and then the different platforms that are not posting certain news that's We're out. You're just starting to notice things. So we just woke you up. We yeah. watch. Yeah, right, <laughs> you're right, awake. Right, right. I'm woke now. <laughs> so eyes are open. I uh, I watched that documentary that you recommended last week, right? The uh, no, no safe spaces, spaces right? right? And it had the full length clip of that. And you, I think one of you two shared that. That uh, triggered social justice warrior cartoon uh, along. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good so, time. Yeah. yeah, I think you shared it before, like in your story. Social or, justice social warrior. Social justice warrior. Yeah, I just felt it was appropriate to post the whole thing on my page, right? So I, I did, and it made me laugh. And I just, I, so I put it out there. I just wanted to see what would happen, right? See if, if there were people that would actually get offended by some cartoon like that, which I was, I was impressed by. My audience that did watch it, I didn't get anybody who got all... If you have any audience left over that gets offended easily, I, know, I, know, I, mean, I, feel, I don't I, know how that's possible. I feel like I purged them every like yeah. few weeks, right? So anyway, so I post it. Now, here's the part of the trip. I trip on this, okay? So if you go back up to... I went as far as I think almost two years on my Instagram page. I don't have a single video I've ever posted. The dumbest video or the lamest you know, video I've ever posted got 10,000 plus views on it. Most of my videos, if I do a squad, a death, anything, gets 20,000 plus views on my on mm-hmm. my main page. Up to t- two years ago, right? Yeah. So obviously I was, the page was like much smaller over two years ago. So I post that and it has 4,000 views. And I'm like, mm-hmm. now, now you know, the, the cackles, my tinfoil hat goes on. I'm like, come on, does, am, I, am I getting sucked in? Because I got Sal and Justin as co-hosts and they're always in my ear. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, let me test this. So... I do a giveaway, which I know anytime I give away our programs, which I do rarely on my page, but I do every once in a while, I'll do like a giveaway. I know I can get a ton of traffic, right? That'll just drive that page. And so I say, hey, I'm giving away a program for one one guy, one girl, uh, tag as many people as you can uh, on this the last post I just did, which was the video. Mm-hmm. So let me see. So the thing has got, I don't know where it's at right now. It's got uh, hundreds and hundreds, maybe a thousand tags on it now. 
and comments, which anything that I get that gets thousands of comments on it ends up getting tens of thousands of views. The sure. thing still only has like 6,000 or 8,000 uh, views on the thing. Mm. So explain that to me. It's well- Shadow banned. It's the lizard people. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> lizard. They're just, they don't want the truth. No, it's, you're probably getting shadow banned because it says- I don't understand how that works. So they'll restrict, so they have algorithm. This is true. This is not a this conspiracy theory. They have algorithms that pick up certain language. For example, if you put in your post anything that says COVID or coronavirus, automatically- at the bottom of your post, there'll be a link to, I think it's the CDC, CDC website yeah. on COVID. And it, they're not people who are watching posts. There's way too many of them. It's an algorithm. So there's other phrases and stuff that'll get them to ban outright for the algorithm to tell you your page is going to get blocked or taken down or warn you or maybe even shadow banned. And the video says social justice warrior. My guess is that's the word or phrase that got it shadow banned because you're right. It should get, and you know what? Right now, dude, social media giants are, they are, they're squeezing hard. They are fucked. Yeah. They have really screwed themselves yeah. because did you guys see what they did with that New York post article? No, I didn't. I mm -mm. saw that you posted about it. But. So there was a, there was a, like, this is a breaking uh, news report. Okay. Are you talking uh, about Biden's son? Yeah. So, okay. Make a long story short. Uh, a laptop was recovered. <laughs> it had pictures of Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, doing some shit, uh, drugs and whatever. But that's not the story. The story was that there are emails that show that Hunter Biden uh, set up a meeting with um, Ukrainian uh, like officials or whatever with his dad. Um, and there was a whole controversy as to whether or not uh, Joe Biden was kind of doing a pay for play type of thing. Like if you, if you don't do this policy or if you don't help us out, then we're going to withhold uh, foreign aid or whatever. So that was a story before no evidence. Now this could potentially be evidence. And apparently there's more stuff on there anyway, immediately, Bl blocked yeah. on Facebook, on Twitter. And it was before the fact checkers, because they have independent fact checkers that'll get on there and say if it's false or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was blocked even before that happened. Now, did you hear Did you hear how this story came out to begin with? Yeah, some some like repairman. Yeah, okay, so this is the part that seems really fishy to me. Oh, you want to have fun? Three, three computers, okay. Three computers are dropped off of Biden's, right? Or of, of, of his son. Or Randomly by someone. Randomly by someone, okay? Gets dropped off to be, quote unquote, repaired. Three of them. Yeah, nobody shows up to get them. Ex nobody comes back to pick them up. That's weird as fuck to me. So so let's get to that in a second because I have some of my own uh, fun with that. But so you here's the problem. educating me today. It's oh, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. So here's the deal. Is the true? Is the story true or not? I don't know. It seems like there's more evidence coming out that there may be some truth in there. Um, but the crazy thing is that the platform blocked it completely before any fact checkers uh, came out and, and said whatever. In fact, Twitter's CEO even said that. We're going to block this preemptively and wait for the fact checkers, which is kind of like, huh? You don't really do that with everybody. Mm. But anyhow, here's why social media is fucked. I don't care if you believe, if you're pro or against, you know, which side you vote for or whatever. That's not the point. The point is. Now the Republicans are calling uh, these tech CEOs to Congress to testify. And all they're doing is making a case to, to regulate them. And the Democrats at some points have made the case to regulate them. Now the Republicans are making the case to regulate them. Now the public is probably, at least maybe a big portion of the public, is supportive of them getting regulated. They're screwed. The days of yep. social media not having Big Brother regulating them are over. I guarantee it. It's going to totally... <clears throat> Come crashing down, and Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter and all these social media giants are gonna they're gonna be under the thumb of of government, which I don't I don't like at all. Now back to what you said, Adam. That is very weird. You yes. want to know what my theory is? What's that? So we passed uh, laws after September 11th that give the government the ability to spy on anybody, on anybody's emails. Um, they could even take you and imprison you mm. without a uh, warrant, without judge, trial, jury, without a warrant, um, all under the guise of, uh, you know, to fight terrorism or whatever. Whoever the president is, he's got some power over that. So here's what I think tends to happen. Whoever's the president now can pull up dirt on their political enemies because that's what you said makes no sense. No. Who the hell has these, drops them off and leaves them there? Right. 
you know, unless somebody on his team is trying to screw them or I think they found the information, they made this story up. That's what I think. And they're like, you know, how do we get this out in the public without telling them that we're spying on him or whatever? Yeah. That's what I would say. It's got to be something like that because it just makes no sense why you take in three laptops uh, that you're trying to get repaired. You would want those back and then you just disappear. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Or you would take a laptop that's got a picture of you with a crack pipe in your mouth. With just some random. Because that's a picture that was on there. Wow. Hunter Biden's got a crack pipe in his mouth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody's leaving that shit at the repair store. You're breaking that laptop. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, they fix this, please. Yeah. Yeah, dude. They're gonna be. Uh, yeah, my internet speed's been slow lately. It's bogged down. Can you check this out? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, yeah. oh, hey, shit. Don't we don't have that. we don't have anybody yeah. that can figure this yeah. out in our yeah. in our. Yeah. Uh, don't circle. don't look at the the treason pictures and, and emails, please. You know? No, no. no. <laughs> so crazy. Anyway, so um, still waiting for baby. Nothing. I know. Yeah. I thought for sure this weekend was going to be so a break, phone call for so us. So breakdown when you're doing an, an all natural birth from home like you guys are, it what what's the breaking point on like how long will they allow baby to stay in there? I think it's two weeks post uh, due date. Okay. Then leak. Then you they can't do it at home. You have to go to a, a hospital. Oh, okay. So we have some time because her due date was uh, a few days ago. Yeah. So she's a few days past, but we're we're still within the. And I know that. Um, a greater percentage of first-time moms have their baby, I believe, five or six days after their due date is like the average. Hmm. So, but she's—you could tell she's like ready. She's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's done for this thing. Uh, yeah. It's funny too because she was like, while she was going through the pregnancy, she's like, "I don't think I'll ever not want to be pregnant." You know yeah. what I mean? And her yeah. mom and every other woman that's had a baby's like, "Yeah, there's gonna be it's a point." It's gonna shift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. gonna be a you're moment. Be, you're gonna be like, "I need this out." <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Katrina. So made now it. she's doing like five mile walks right. and she's not telling yeah. me like, all the spiciest food possible yeah, can we order it. tacos yeah. like what are we trying to do it's interesting how, how they look back at that because Katri- we were talking about Jessica and uh, Katrina's like you know I really enjoyed being pregnant I looked at her kind of sideways I'm like really did it seem like it from yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Did you really like? Uh, there was moments. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember us having those cute moments, me rubbing her belly and being like, "Oh, I think he's moving in there." You know, like yeah. those are all really cute. But then I also remember like hot, cold sweats, like you know, yeah. irritable, freaking short tempered, falling asleep at five o'clock. I do <laughs> weird ass cravings. I remember all those other things too. You know, so she yeah. does this thing when she goes to bed right now because she's so uncomfortable. <clears throat> And uh, you know you're, you're you know when like a dog goes to bed and they'll like circle around the bed fifteen times and move around a hundred times before. They, oh. So she's doing that. She's like she setting up all the, the pillows. <laughs> she's trying to move. Get, and I just hear her like, uh. Ugh, uh, 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 you know, the, like for like fifteen minutes before she finally finds a spot. And then ten minutes later, she has to get up and pee. You know, oh, so she has man. to start all over. I can't wait till she hears this episode and hears you compare her to so, a, a dog. <laughs> She's no, not like that. We got the text. I, I get the visual. Though. We got the group text the other day when, from out of nowhere. I get this text. I think Justin was in it too. It just yeah. fuck you guys for keep saying that I listen to Inya. <laughs> yeah, she said that. She's, she's, she's over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, yeah. Good telling people. We're I have to, to create Inya. a new analogy yeah. to yeah. that. Yeah. But my 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 daughter's so excited this morning. My daughter woke up and she's she's because she gets up early for school. And she comes down all excited. And she goes, "Did I hear you say Jessica's having contract?" She must have thought or dreamed that Jessica was having contraction. So she was all excited. Is oh she- wow, interesting. I'm like, no, honey, we got to wait a little longer. Yeah, you know, see what happens. I got something for you guys. It's a, it, well, somewhat. It was interesting to me because um, so I've been I've kicked up my training volume the last uh, couple of weeks. I've been I'm getting in like four four plus days now, which is which is good for me. I haven't had that uh, a couple of weeks. I haven't strung together more than three times in a week. And so training volumes up, of course, my appetite's up a little bit more. And I had like a yesterday, I had a really light day of eating. I had missed skip breakfast and then I had a really low, low calorie lunch. So then I had, and I had a pretty good sized dinner, but then I was still like really hungry. So I go over and I'm, I'm eating magic spoon and I'm watching the documentary that, that you had uh, you re- referred to us South. So I'm like in so into it and I'm like mindlessly eating. I'm like, Oh, I definitely can afford another bowl. Cause I'm like, low so I go back and get another bowl and then I go back a third time. Whoa. Realize that I crushed the whole box. Oh wow! <laughs> and I'm like, and so I was like, oh shit! That's okay. a stoner move. Which I yeah, yeah, it was totally. So I go, oh man, let me let me <laughs> track how many calories. I just, you know, it's crazy. Not bad at all. The whole entire box is only 770 calories. What? Now, obviously, if you're a petite 120 pound little girl, that's a lot of food for you. But that 770 calories is just like another meal to me. A whole box? 770 calories, zero zero sugar, 
Okay, carbohydrates total seventy grams of carbs. So that's minus the milk too. And what kind of milk? Yeah, yeah. I use almond milk. So oh, okay. almond, and thirty calories a serving. Yeah, so nice. yeah, maybe an, add an extra sixty to ninety calories of almond milk on that. A couple more grams of, of protein on there. How much protein is it? Seventy seven grams. Oh, that's a Ooh. meal. That's a good. That's a good, That's a big meal. steak meal, bro. Oh yeah. So I was like, oh, this ain't so bad. So mm. the people that have asked because they were like. I wonder what a regular box of like yeah. Fruit oh, Loops one is. box bulk, dude. Mm. There, it's like two hundred grams of sugar. Yeah, it would be a ton of sugar, a ton of carbs, hardly any protein. Yeah, three grams of protein. Yeah, totally like different. That. But you know, I I never once have I intended to eat a whole box of that. But I do remember when we first partnered with them that there was this, you know, oh, you guys are talk about processed foods and this and that, and that's encouraging. You sound like Bill Clinton. Right there. <laughs> <Is that what laughs> yeah, yeah, you, guys were... you guys are encouraging people. I did not have that, sex, did not with that have sex with that lady. <laughs> Listen, if you eat that whole thing, it ain't that bad. Especially if you uh, if you got de decent. I mean, if you eat cal or meals that are. 500 to 1,000 calories, which for me, that's about what I normally eat. 500 to 1,000 is a normal a normal meal. So if I'm eating about 3,000, 3,500 calories a day, that counted as a, as a meal. Dude, that's, Doug, what does that say up there? I can't see that. What is a normal box of cereal, <laughs> sugary cereal? This is Fruit Loops. Mm. Okay, one serving is 110 calories, exactly the same as Magic Spoon, by the way. Uh, one gram of protein. So if you ate seven servings of that, you would have seven grams of protein. Wow. wow. And... 26 grams of carbs, of which 12 grams are sugar. So you do the math on that. What's that? 84 grams of sugar. Mm. So if, it, you're, if you're trying to be on a low yeah, protein, how, yeah, but how, many, how many servings are in that box? Can you see? Uh, I can't see how many are. I mean, they have different size boxes. They do. They, mm. and in fact, regular cereals, there's more in it. I think mm. that's part of the, the... Well, yes. And especially if you go to Costco, you get the jumbo box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get the Thank jumbo you. Hey, box. listen, I tell you, if you're on a high sugar, no protein diet, you know, Fruit Loops, that's the way to go. <laughs> Yeah, that is the move. Yeah. I'm trying to make my body, you know, insensitive to insulin yeah, and bit, uh, but bigger, really, but hey, also doughy. And give me another meal that's 700 calories and get 70 grams of protein. Yeah, I feel like that's a. I, I wish I had something like that when I was trying to eat more to build muscle when I was younger. When my metabolism was oh so yeah, fast, imagine was throwing annoying. some whole milk in there and what that it would then it would jump into an awesome bulking meal. Well, not just that, but because it tastes good, you know, you could eat it, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, I remember when I would eat, you know, 4,000 oh, calories. So sure. Yeah, like just to get something that you know you can look forward to eating all the time is is a win. Yeah, just chewing on my you know, I chew on my steak all night. I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. <laughs> Raw eggs. Speaking of else. speaking of bulking, dude, I didn't. I'm a damn buffalo right now. I am so big. Yeah, I don't know what's. I weigh two fifteen on accident. I'm not even yeah. trying right now. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I'm kind of buff too, but right, now, are, the <laughs> yeah. you were now is this post you running keto because you were running keto for a minute? Did you switch back? Oh to yeah, no, I'm eating normal now. Yeah, I only do that for a couple months, and then I'll typically go off. But you know what I notice when I get a little bigger? I'm obviously stronger, and but I notice my joints start to bother me a little bit. You yeah. know, I start to pre what do you, what do you what do you say? Push the seams or uh, pressure the hinges? Pressure the hinges. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm starting to feel right now, and I think that's a common thing, right? When a when a husband's wife is pregnant, don't they kind of? Tend to gain along. I mean, them. I went the other way yeah, first. Dude. I totally bulked. I didn't until after the fact. So I knew that, like going into it, like okay, we're probably gonna be laying around the house, which I was right. Right, we didn't do much for the first like six months. So I went in. I tried to go in with as much momentum as I could, and I think I did pretty solid for the first couple weeks of having uh, having Max around, and then like fell off and was, then became very sporadic. So. Mm. I, I I went in to the pregnancy feeling pretty damn good, but like now they took me about, I don't know, probably two months before I started to go like, oh, okay, this is, I've let myself go yeah. too far. Speaking of big, are you, do you, have you guys ever seen the Iranian Hulk? Yeah, I've seen him. I you have? I've seen pictures. I've heard like Photoshop though. That's what I've heard. No, okay. It looks, I think it's real. He has like a tiny head and just a ridiculously huge body. So I saw him a long time ago and he popped up, uh, somebody tagged me on him the other day. There's uh, all kinds of uh, viral YouTube videos around him being fake. Really? Mm -hmm. How? I looked into it a long time ago. How, okay. I, look at these pictures. See if Doug can pull it up because I sent you the link. Hmm. He just he just looks like a massive human being. He doesn't look like he's geared up, but maybe he is. I don't know. Seems to what? be a lot of. You don't think he looks geared up to you? You know, you have, have you ever met somebody that's just massive naturally? Well, yeah, you get like a Tony Robbins, right? What's that yeah. disease called? Yeah. Look at him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's just huge. Yeah. 
And the thing is, angles, I don't know, man. You can do a lot with the camera and, and Photoshop. Dude. Yeah, I'll dude, he looks crazy looking. Yeah, I heard, look how small his waist is for a yeah, size. Like, see, look, like some of those look like kind of normal, and then some of them, it's just like, no way, dude. Have you, okay, there's a bodybuilder called, is it Craig or Craig Goliath or something like that, who, who also is just so big, it doesn't make any sense. And Jessica's brother lives in Vegas and told me he works out. Uh, at a gym that that guy works out at. And I told him, I said, have you seen him in life, in real life? He goes, yeah, is, is he big like that? And he goes, he looks crazier in real life. Oh, so wow. there are humans that look like this in yeah. real life. That just, Look at him. Now look at oh, yeah. him. Yeah. He looks like Goliath. Look at, <laughs> look at look at the size of his feet. I will eat you. See what I'm saying? He yeah. might have that would you, uh, gigantism or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It looks like an action Google, figure. Doug, yeah, Google yeah. if he's uh, uh, photoshopped our rating Hulk or whatever, something around that. Find out. Because I, I went down the rabbit hole when I first got – someone shared this guy with me like years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. That looks kind of fake. To well, me. that's yeah. the thing. I mean, I know the fake weights thing has been a big part of like our weird influencer sort of industry, like, you know, with like Castleberry and all these people like speculation on these people. Like, are they really lifting this amount of heavy weight? And it's almost like if you get into that thing where the weight is your only sort of redeeming value, like I'm sure like they, they consider it, right? Yeah, and I, I also feel like with the fake weight type of stuff, some of these guys, I mean, they're working out in commercial gyms. What are they doing? Like bringing in yeah, boxes somebody would, of fake plates into some, the gym? Somebody would take a picture. Yeah, like how how could you like move that in without people noticing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what's uh, Joe Rogan was just talking about Brad Castleberry with somebody. They were talking oh, about yeah. how you know he, he works out in 24 Fitness. So if he was doing fake weights, so, those are 24 Fitness has their own weight plates, right? So. Mm -hmm. You would have to come in, and they in twenty four fitness. Those hex not, plates. They don't yeah. supply fake weights at twenty four fitness. No. So you would have to walk in with at least two to four of those fake plates to be able to do these. So yeah, I, I feel like in today's world where everyone takes photos of each other and, some, and for sure everyone knows who Brad Castleberry is in the fitness world. So if he walks in, you're taking a photo Look, if he's carrying I, plates, right? I've done this long enough to tell you this right now, 100%. I'm not saying that there aren't people that are fake, and I'm not saying that there, are, there aren't people who take lots of gear and all that stuff. But you know, when I was younger, I was convinced that anybody who did anything remarkable, yeah, it was because they took lots of drugs or because it was fake. Yeah, and then I trick. And then I worked in gyms for decades, and I met actual not a lot, by the way, they're rare to see this. But I met actual people that seemed to be different than yeah. they were not a, the same species. Unassuming, just yeah. crazy. You know, I, I knew a guy that looked like he was like two hundred something pounds, like two hundred ten pounds with skull crushers, two twenty five. He would bench four plates, like it wasn't even there. I knew a guy who was one sixty who would bench five hundred pounds, and it would come off his chest like whatever. Well, that's what I, I tell people. When people I get yeah, still to this day, we, I get DM'd and tagged like, "Do you think this guy is natural?" I said, "I don't even try and guess anymore because yeah. of that exact reason. Because I've been proven wrong on both sides enough times that it's like it's not even worth it. It's right. not even worth to sit here and try and speculate. Like, is that person? Real I know. Or there's real? so many YouTube channels and people out there trying to like point these things <laughs> out. They think I know they got all it, the insight. You know, it's what like, is really? that about us that we care that much? Yeah, I don't know. Because like, you don't want to feel bad about yourself. Yeah, I think. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't know. Like the difference if if Brad Castleberry is squatting, you know, three hundred pounds to nine hundred pounds, it doesn't make a difference on how I feel. I mean, no matter what, the dude's strong, right? Like he's strong, no matter what. He's, I, you know what impresses me about him? Not it, what he lifts. Oh, he's how athletic he is. When I see him do kick flips on skateboards and yeah. sprint, yeah, and jumps or, out of the pool, and yeah, does all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's when I'm like, all right, this dude's a freak. Yeah. You know? So who cares if he if he squats a hundred pound less than what he's what he's uh, saying? Like, come on, dude. Yeah, it's well, still a lot. You know what it is. <laughs> Dude, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, lesson or real. It's like a reality check when you finally realize that you're not. There's no way you're going to be great in certain things. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you see a football player and you're playing football and you're a kid. Maybe you're in high school. Maybe at your high school you're a badass. Yeah. And then you you reach a certain level and you're just like. Oh, I'm never going to be. Oh, I had that in college. Yeah, yeah I just say it wasn't. <laughs> thank, thanks for I was gonna say, that. Up. He looked at you when he <laughs> yeah. said that, too. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> you were looking at it's you. fine, dude. I was a hero in high school, right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I was awesome. And then I got to college and I was like, I was just fucking surviving, you know, just like trying not to get my isn't head that, ripped off. Isn't that crazy? What a, like, what a, a slice of humble pie that is, Justin? Like, you could be like this total badass in your school and, and then you get to college and then it's yeah. like, and then imagine, imagine the next well, level. Exactly. That's what I was going to bring up because, like, people always think uh, I mean, 
they, they don't really consider NFL athletes for what they really are. You know, the 1% of like already the one percenters, you right. know, it's like the ones that like make even division one college football, which we played one team that was a division one legit. And like a, like right as they turned to a, a division one team in, in a bowl game, they just destroyed us. Like we we're little babies out there. Like, <laughs> like, like, ah, I was running as fast as I could. Yeah. Like, like I was hitting as hard as I possibly could and just, <laughs> You know, like nothing like, you know, the, there's a different level, you know, the different uh, type of human that, you know, it just kind of keeps going up. The scale gets more intense. The speed gets faster, all that stuff. Dude, I, I remember there was a, uh, a, a world champion or high level ranked uh, jujitsu guy that came into the jujitsu school. And by this point, I was a purple belt and black belts definitely more often than not would beat me. But I, because I was strong and I was decent, I could hold off. Uh, a lot of black belts for a certain amount of time. I could at least give them some struggle, but I was going against guys that were, you know, local champions or local competitors. This dude comes in from Brazil, and it was embarrassed. I, I was, I, it was such a. I remember I went home and I had to really like deal with my pride. Like I had to sit there and think about it because it felt like every time he touched me, I would tap out. Like it was silly. Every single day, everything I did. Ah. I, w I wouldn't even tap out. Sometimes I'd scream, <laughs> and, and then he would let go because he was so it hurt so much. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, this is stupid because in real life, think how fun it was for that guy. Yeah, <laughs> he can, bro. I feel like I feel like he could have been eating a sandwich. You know what I mean? I feel like he could have been just eating a sandwich. I just oh, kicked my ass. So much power. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's so embarrassing. Yeah. I was talking to um, our, uh, a friend of ours. I can't remember his name right now. He was. Uh, a Greco-Roman alternate, so in the Olympics, alternate meaning you know he, could, he almost made it to the Olympics, very very good. Yeah, he went to Russia and got to spar with uh, the Russian bear. I can't remember uh, his his full name. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, this guy is the most winningest Greco-Roman wrestler of all time, and maybe Doug can look him up. The Russian bear uh, Greco wrestler. I hope he was hairy. He and the guy at the time, the the Russian wrestler now was retired, so he's like fifty something years old. And again, my buddy's a, a, an Olympic alternate. He says that every time the guy put his... That's not him. Oh, Alexander Carolyn. Thank you. He says every time Alexander just put his hands on him, like just to mess around, he said he would leave bruises on his <laughs> arms and shoulders. And he's like, this is not the same, <laughs> yeah. same thing. Yeah. yeah, that guy right there, I think one, he was undefeated for I don't know how many decades. Uh, he just... Nobody could touch him or whatever. Yeah, you don't even want to practice with that guy. Yeah, dude. So yeah. he's like, it's a different per. There he is. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of wrestling badass, it reminds me of a story. I don't know if I share this with you guys, and I don't know if it'll make the Dilf Wisdom series that we're doing. So we're doing a series called Dilf Wisdom that is releasing soon where I've interviewed some uh, dads. Some Dilfs. Some Dilfs. Yeah. Dads in love with fitness, right? Some dads that have built businesses. And Joe DeSina, I, I was one of the ones that I interviewed already. And he's always got great stories. And one of the questions that I was kind of challenging him is that because he Joe is like we we know he's like super hard on his kids, right? Mm. He's like he's the one who's like inspired me. Introduce challenge. Yeah, I, I talk about manufacturing adversity because of him, right? Because he talks about that a lot with with his kids. And so I I tell him like, man, don't you ever worry though that you're trying so hard that they're going to revolt when they get older. And his his response back to that is, Adam, they don't they don't know any other thing. I keep them around that. Like they're all of their culture, all the people they're around. And he just he's like, for example, last weekend we just got back from and I don't know who the name of the guy is. He's supposedly supposed to be like the the baddest dude of wrestlers. He can't he came uh, from uh what college? What college did Joe go to? Do you guys remember what college Joe went to? No. Uh Cornell? Yeah, I was, don't recall. No. Yeah, I think it was Cornell. So I think the, this wrestler I think is out of there because Joe has ties there still and so, and and the, he's supposed to be like one of the best up and coming wrestlers in the world right now. And so, Joe takes his kid over there and spends the night with his dad and the son. Like, I mean, he just has this access to all these like great people, and that's how he kind of shows his kids. Like, and and so he could they can see besides their dad how their dad's always challenging, push them. And one of the things that he talked about that I thought was really really cool is <clears throat> it is Cornell. Yeah, so it's Cornell. So. He goes to this this guy's house, and you know he's the kids getting to listen to the training of this dad. And one of the things the dad did really early on 
was went out and got a NCAA wrestling mat and I think like an Olympic mat so the kid could see already like collegiate level wrestling mat and mm-hmm. they're like Olympic level wrestling mat and that's what they trained on since he was a kid like to already start to condition him to like that's normal for him to be rolling around on a mat like mm-hmm. that and they have this down in the basement and you guys know the the 10,000 hours rule right like mm-hmm. that's what they they say it takes to be considered a master and so he presented that message to his uh, his son at a very early age and so they began to track it and so inside the wall basement wall where the mats are and they wrestle is little hash marks for every single hour. Oh wow! That they've spent, they put in there. Yeah. yeah, until he's got up to over what a ten. Great visual. I yeah. know, isn't that like I? I heard that. And I'm like, oh, that. that is so cool to do something like that. Teach your kid that early on. That hey, man, we're, we got a long ways to go before we consider ourselves a master. And just kind of chipping away at it, so he could see something like that on the yeah, wall. Yeah, you know what I think is a really along those lines. What's a really good smart thing? Uh, just based off of other fathers I've talked about who did this as kids themselves, are uh, missions. So where they in high school for a year or at a high school for a year or so, they'll go, and it's usually tied to their church, um, but it didn't have to be. And they'll go off and for a year they'll go, uh, you know, help feed you know, the homeless or build houses in Central America or do something like that. I feel like that's a really good way to uh, kind of ground your kid. You know what I mean? If they grow up in your house and you're successful and they have everything provided, yeah. to have them go and serve for a year or something like that. And that's usually what the dads tell me. They say it was really valuable. It was hard, but it was really valuable because uh, it made me grateful for what I have. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, more. Yeah, I, you I can talk tougher. about it all you want, but like really, you need to immerse yourself in it sometimes for them to get like true perspective of that. Yeah. yeah. I, I totally, yeah. I, I think along those lines of like how to do that and like, uh, you know, where to introduce that and when. And I, I think it's like super invaluable for kids to learn that, just totally. to watch it. Yeah. Totally. Oh, Doug, I want to ask you, uh, I want to bring this up now because you were texting us, mm-hmm. uh, like, was it maybe like a week ago? Um, Are you going to sell him out right now? I don't, I'm not, I mean, <laughs> Are I just you sell him out. All I'm going to say is his 4, his 4 a.m. Uh, <laughs> debacle. D- Doug was testing Z Biotics. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You're throwing me under the bus here. Yeah. <laughs> but the text is, hey, I'm smashed, guys. <laughs> Well, so, what was in deal? my own defense, I don't drink a lot as a general rule, but I did this one time. Uh, yeah, I don't want to throw the other person under the bus either, but a friend I hadn't seen for a while, <laughs> I invited up to Truckee, and uh, we went up there, and I knew he liked bourbon, so I brought two vials of Z-Biotics. Okay. And so before we started drinking... Uh, we both took our Z-Biotics, and then we started hitting the 750-milliliter bottle of bourbon. Yeah. And we sat outside by the fire, beautiful evening, drinking bur- bourbon, catching up, talking about all types of things in the past. And next thing I know, that bottle's empty. The whole bottle? The whole bottle is empty. And then... Justin had another bottle in there that was about a third <laughs> full. Sure, Doug, throw me into this. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you make uh, some great old hey. fashions, I got to say. So I, I anyway, do. we knocked off that bottle as well. Oh, my God. Damn. That's a lot, dude. And then we looked at the time. It was 4.30 a.m. When you responded to my text. That sounds like a great yeah. night yeah. to me. I, would, I needed some like <laughs> information for house stuff, and I was texting Doug, and like I didn't hear back from him. I, got, I wake up in the morning, there's a response at like 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to bed. Uh, I had presence of mind to obviously turn off the fire and lock the doors. <laughs> I can't That's believe good. I did that, Thank right? God. Yeah. Went to bed. And uh, slept solid till noon. Yeah. Normally, if you drink a lot like that, You're you wake sleeping. up. You don't sleep uh, well. Yeah. I slept solid until noon. We both got up and both of us were tired. We felt tired, but none of the, the typical hangover things like That's the crazy. headache and that type of thing. And then we took off. We went down to Lake Tahoe and the whole nine yards. That's amazing. Unbelievable. So this, and your friend, same thing. Were totally they, the same. And then what In they fact, say? he goes, give me the address the url for that because i want to buy that he goes he lives in an area where there's a fairly affluent area and during covid they were having this social distance hour every single day all the neighbors were coming out and uh having having drinks he goes the neighbors are going to go crazy over this stuff mm. oh yeah 
you that's, know that's been a thing that's ha- so I have a, a client old client of mine that that's she does that every Friday so all the well, they, they just sit outside yeah they have a cola sac where the neighbor and they all sit like six feet apart and they I all like that I know I, that's yeah. kind of cool I like there's, that I want to try that one yeah there's more neighbors that are doing I didn't realize that was a thing right now so when Doug told me that I was like oh wow that's I guess she's not the only one that's doing that by the way I don't recommend doing what we did <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's> a lot. <laughs> but if you do do it <laughs> definitely uh, drink the Z-biotic D- beforehand Doug yeah, the that's jug. the move man Doug the jug speaking of genetically modified because that's the the bacteria and zebotics are genetically modified to do that um the world's first approval or first country has approved gmo wheat she doesn't know this so wheat uh it it has not been available as gmo at all uh, contrary to popular i think a lot of people think wheat. yeah i I thought it was assumed it was no wheat is modified but through traditional means of you know breeding or other ways but Uh this is the first gmo wheat now, here's the deal with GMO uh, products. Um, I'm not opposed necessarily to GMO products. It depends on the product and how it's modified. For example, GMO corn, the corn itself probably doesn't cause any issues. The issue I have is that they are sprayed heavily with glyphosate, yeah. and it's that glyphosate residue that I, I have an issue with. But this GMO wheat is not genetically modified to withstand uh, herbicide. It's designed to be res- uh, resistant to drought. So uh, huh. this particular wheat, which is brilliant, I think. This is when I think science can can do some pretty amazing things. This particular wheat, it's in Argentina, by the way, that, uh, that approved it. This particular wheat under really str- like bad drought conditions will produce 20 to 30% more yield than normal wheat, which is huge. That's a massive, massive wow. uh, improvement. And, you know, if we are indeed experiencing more droughts and, you know, changing climate, which, you know, seems to be the case, Mm -hmm. um, something like this can totally be pretty awesome. You you know what the challenge is? What's that? How they, that they're worried that people won't buy it because it's GMO. Just because it's GMO. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what are we going to do about educating the public or whatever? Because it could crash on the market Hmm. because people might not want to buy it. But isn't that interesting? Yeah, no, yeah. that's that's crazy. Yeah, I totally would have assumed it was already created before. So that's that's new to me. No, no, yeah, I know Jessica too. She actually we got in a little debate about that. Where I was talking about, she's like, GMO wheat already exists. I'm like, well, no, I remember doesn't. when they they patented corn, right? The GMO corn, yep. and yeah, and made that a thing. And like, you can't say it's corn then, right? Because that's that, ex- see, that's not in Argentina. Not I think okay. they have to say it's GMO. Okay. See, what they did in the U.S. is they made it so that GMO foods don't need to say that they're GMO. So people were buying it without even noting, yeah. knowing. Mm-hmm. And that's how they were able to penetrate the market. I mean, yeah. do we need that much more wheat? Or we, uh, I mean, what's the, what is, why produce 20 to 30% more? Drop the cost. So mm-hmm. make it more, make it less expensive, increase the yield, probably use more, less land mm. to produce the same amount of wheat. So it's just more efficient. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, if you have good distribution, then you're able to, uh, that helps people who need food more. More efficient, but not natural. Do you think that's always the best route? I think it's it, we're probably in a position where that's it. I mean, think about it this way: uh, wild caught fish, like we're just fishing the ocean so much that we're probably going to farm fish the way we farm animals uh, in mass. I mean, we already do, but right. you know, going out into the wild, for example, and hunting animals to feed most people, we can't do that because we would yeah. we've, kill. We've everything. rigged all that system of hunting yeah. and fishing, uh, uh, you know, to be able to give us more yield. So it only makes sense. Yeah. I mean, agriculture in general is not natural, right? We plant crops and figure yeah. out how to get them to yield more so. It's just part of that process. But um, as long as they're not spraying them with too much glyphosate, I think it might be okay. But we'll see. Mm. See what happens. Hmm. First question is from Hades Gray 9. Is it okay to do, only do compound exercises like bent over rows, chest press, squats, etc., and leave out isolation exercises like bicep curls, tricep extensions, etc.? What do you think, Justin? Yeah. that's definitely it's i mean yes it's totally okay and uh, isolation exercises will help you add more volume to certain muscle groups will help you with development you'll probably build a little bit more muscle but uh, Mm -hmm. compound exercises do most of the work they do most of the work with muscle building and fat burning and strength gain in fact this is how i trained a lot of my everyday average clients who came in a couple days a week They wanted to just be healthy and and be strong and be fit and be mobile. And 
rarely would I do a lot of isolation exercises. Mo mainly I would focus on the compound stuff. Like for example, if I'm taking you through a workout and we do squats, rows, bench presses, overhead presses, and then I look up at the clock and I have 10 minutes left or 15 minutes left with my client. Um, I can choose another compound exercise or I could choose another one or two isolation exercise. I'll probably go with the compound exercise. It's yeah, just it's funny. Ironically, I'm I'm doing the opposite these days. But yes, this used to be my, my go-to in terms of like always leaning heavy on the compound exercises, only doing the isolation ones when uh, I felt like I was just trying to get ready for the beach or something, you know, uh, uh, to – to, to, to highlight uh, more muscle definition or whatever. But in terms of what I got me the most bang for the buck and, and the most strength uh, and, and the most efficiency in my workouts was always, you know, geared around focusing my workouts around these compound lifts, squats, overhead press, deadlifts, you know, what have you. Well, it's very simple why why this is true because you can't, you cannot get strong or good at an overhead press without your triceps getting developed also. Like you're not gonna push, you're not gonna get stronger doing it. Like if you just, yeah, so I think that, I think that's an important thing to note though when you talk about these compound lifts. It's like you, you still want to have a goal of getting stronger doing all those lifts, and if you do get stronger, as a side effect, you know, you're going to have you develop your triceps. If you get good at pull ups and you get good at overhead presses, the tricep and the bicep are both gonna develop. It's just part. Of, it's just part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. You can't get to a place where you're pressing. 180, 200 pounds up over your head or pulling your, your body weight 10, 15 times or with weight uh, attached to you and not think that your biceps are going to develop from the pull-ups and not think that your triceps are not going to develop from your overhead press. That's the beauty of it. And the thing is when you do the isolation exercises, you don't get any other added benefits to other muscle groups. You're getting it to that one specific muscle group. So it makes sense to me when you're somebody who is trying to develop an area like you it, you're talking about aesthetics or you care about the way a muscle looks and so that's your focus general population most of my clients that were coming in to lose body fat and build a little muscle just want to be healthy uh, have a balanced physique they're like hey that's what we want to do we do mostly compound lifts if you have somebody who comes in says, says something specific like adam i want to work on my my you know triceps or my arms i want to develop my arms more or you know they they have a specific or their butt right if you have a specific body part that you want to target there's then absolutely we utilize uh, isolation exercises and they do have value but for the most for the majority if you were to just do if do those movements and get really good at those movements, the bicep oh, yeah. and the tricep would and develop. And saving you time. I, I, I swear it's it's funny because going back into these isolation right. moves and like how much time it takes me to get through these workouts, it feels like forever. I, I mean, in, in terms of like me just doing like a five by five where I'm just focused on like five exercises and, you know, I'm sort of in and out within 30, 40 minutes. You know, now I'm like, you know, really honing in on isolating and it takes me like a good hour, hour, 20 minutes to finish. So. Yeah, I mean, look at like... Yeah. Uh, for example, look at gymnasts. They have some of the most amazing biceps uh, in sports aside from bodybuilders, right? Gymnasts don't do curls. Uh, they do a lot of pull-ups. They do a ton of pull They have amazing triceps too, but they do a lot of dips. They don't do a lot of tricep uh, press downs. Isolation exercises are great to add extra volume. Um, they're great for things like pre-exhausting and connecting to certain muscles groups. So I'm not saying that they're not valuable, but if I had to pick one or the other, I mean, it's hands down, compound exercises. Hands down, there's no, co no competition. The next question is from The Realist. What are the best sources of carbs? In my opinion, the best sources of carbohydrates are the ones that are the- Potatoes e and rice. The easiest to digest. They're the ones that you can eat and f not feel bloated, uh, not have any gastro distress of any type. And in my experience uh, with clients and even myself, uh, the two sources of carbs that seem to do that well, where you can get your starchy carbohydrates, you can get the fuel for your workouts, uh, and also have great digestion, um, even if you eat a lot of them, like if I've worked with clients who need to eat a lot of carbs, um, is white rice, very easy to digest for most people, and sweet potato. Sweet potato is the other one. When when I eat a lot of sweet potato, I have great digestion. That's not always the case with other carbohydrates. Like if I eat a lot of oatmeal, oatmeal is okay as a source of carbs, but it could definitely cause bloat uh, and digestive issues if it push it too much. 
Uh, white rice and sweet potato, I'd say, are probably the two best ones. Staple carbs for me when I was competing. Mm. White rice and sweet potato. Although I did use oats. I did use oatmeal. Oatmeal does uh, work pretty well for me. I think that's the answer, though, what you just said, is that it really depends on how your body responds to it. There's, mm. Some people are fine with bread. Some people do okay with that. If you do okay with it and you don't have digestion. I haven't met a lot of people, though. I yeah. have. I think mm. you, it can, like, at least so when I was in the, the competitive world, I met a lot of people that utilize bread and it worked for them. And it's like, if it works for you, it works for you. But- um, I think that's what matters. I think what matters is learning, but you also have to be consistent enough to be able to measure like, okay, how's this affecting me? Exactly. Yeah. So that's the first step. And I personally, what I found with myself and most of my clients, it's the ones that you just listed, mm. sweet potato, yams, rice, uh, quinoa does really well. Also, uh, those tend to be some of my favorite sources of carbs and then vegetables, right? So if you're, you're eating your greens and veggies, then, uh, any, you know, oh, a nice, a nice uh, color diversity of, of carbohydrates with rice and sweet potato, yams, quinoa. Like that was like my staple. Yeah. And I have trained some endurance athletes and um, endurance, endurance athletes probably have the best case for higher carbohydrate um, diets. Uh, many endurance athletes just perform better when their diets uh, are very high carb. That's not to say that they shouldn't have a decent amount of protein too, but because their goal is endurance, um, carbs tend to be the more important macronutrients so long as they hit their their, their basics. Mm. And I've worked with clients who were endurance athletes who got a lot of their carbs from pasta. Mm -hmm. And they would eat lots of pasta, which comes from wheat. And when they work with me, I would have them experiment. And I'd say, "Can we? let's try switching to uh, white rice or quinoa-based pasta. So rather than the wheat-based pasta, Let's do pasta that's made with uh, quinoa or rice, and let's see what happens. And I'm trying to think right now. I think every single time there were positive uh, yeah. results. Like I think almost every single time that what I got back from them was, oh my god, I feel my digestion feels better. Yeah, the um, gastro distress. I've had the same yeah. with athletes. Like they didn't even realize it was there because they're feeling like it was fueling their energy for these, you know, long bouts of uh, intense uh, activity. And, you know, once you started to switch that up and, and get more uh, from something that was like easily digestible, it made a massive difference in their performance and the longevity of their energy. Yeah, wheat, you know, wheat has uh, compounds in it that the plant uh, produces to, per to disencourage animals from eating them. So with wheat, you have to grind it and, and cook it, and uh, you know. Is that what Paul Saladino was talking about on Joe Rogan? Yeah, the, that that was interesting as shit to me. Yeah, I mean, how that doesn't happen until you actually bite into it, and then they then it. Uh, the, oh, that was something else. Yeah. Oh, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, yeah. I thought it was. It wasn't wheat. It was vegetables. He was it talking was about. something else. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was really fascinating. Yeah, but no, with wheat, you 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 can't just. Pull, pick wheat and eat it. It would destroy you. You have to really grind the shit out of it. Uh, ancient cultures used to also ferment it, which would break down some of the, the gluten and other compounds uh, to make it digestible. Rice, white rice, they already remove the, the, the hole or whatever. It's like brown rice, harder to digest than white rice. White rice, they remove a lot of the part of the plant that makes it harder to digest. So what you're left with is easily digestible starch. And this is why white is superior to brown, right? That's a For question digestible. I get all the time. Yes, because on paper, you'd think brown rice is better. Oh, it's got more yeah, it's fiber, fiber, it's got more right? nutrients. Yeah. But it actually has anti-nutrients. It can cause your body to uh, absorb certain nutrients less. Um, it's harder to digest. So the reality is, forget what it says on paper. With, with certain foods, you want to remove the parts that can potentially make them hard to digest. Mm. And so white rice is much easier to di digest than brown rice. And white rice for most people is much easier to digest than, than wheat based products. Next question <clears throat> is from Eric Summer Hayes. I see a lot of professional athletes, mostly baseball players that are overweight. Would those players be able to increase their athletic abilities by dropping some body fat or is there actually an advantage to packing on extra weight? This is a cool question. This, yeah. Justin I mean, must have picked this question. I, I, yeah. It's yeah. A, you know, near and dear to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no there, I, I, I like the fatty athletes out there. I like this because I've, there's, there's, um, I've heard both sides argued really well. And I, and I can see where, you know, let's take someone like a, a, a Pablo Sandoval, right? Who's got like a lot of extra weight on him. Super athletic though. Yeah. Right. And then yeah, you, you and, can't deny it. And then you have to ask someone like that, the way he, the way he crushes a baseball 
if some of that extra weight is used is in, to his benefit for momentum. Mm. Now, would he be a little bit more agile at third base that if he was 20 or 30 pounds lighter? Sure. You can't help but think, yeah. You're right. Sure. Yeah. I, I could see that. But then he also might not hit the ball as far if uh, he was smaller. So there's, I think there's yeah. places. And then same thing with like linemen, right? If you had a lineman who weighs 300 and something pounds, but you made him lose 50 to 60 pounds, he would be much more agile. He'll be faster, right? But then would he be less of a movable force and would he be as de as dominant as a lineman? So Yeah, it's an interesting th idea because I've seen um I've seen like both kind of perspectives like so um, I've seen linemen that actually like you think they have to just be big. They just have to be massive and, you know, immovable uh, where I've seen some linemen that uh, might have like smaller stature and, you know, a smaller body, but they're very uh, powerful. And, and the way that they can snap and move and the athleticism has knocked uh, these big ogres on their back. And it, it just it depends on like how you are grounded and how how much snap that you have. And, and so for me, it's like, it's all based on power uh, output. Doug, will you pull up a picture of uh, Aaron Donald? I want to see what he, his, his physique looks like. So I, I think there's a, um, I think you're right. I think there, I think there's a, a point, right? So I think there's a point where it's too much. How do we judge that as viewers? It's what's really tough. I'm yeah. pulling up like arguably one of the best right now, right? Like, yeah, so look at that. Because if you change too, if you change their their body weight in there, it's going to change their mechanics. It's all going to get effective. So they're going to have to relearn a lot of these skills, uh, you know, in their 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 smaller uh, frame. And so that's that's something too to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody like a Pablo, uh, you know, is is going back and and now is is going through swinging and the mechanics of it. You know, that whole weight distribution is going to change so there's there's the best lineman in the game right there yeah so he don't look he, don't, he definitely don't look fat no no, no he, looks he looks like a powerful as hell though you yeah. know you know what it's way more complex than the black and white this person's lean this person's fat therefore it's way more complex than that like yeah. for example when you look at like weight class uh based sports like wrestling or mixed martial arts for example you may see a heavyweight you may see two heavyweights one of them kind of looks a little soft, big guy, right? The other one is shredded and muscular. And you might think to yourself like, oh, the shredded muscular guy has the advantage. Okay, now let's pretend that they have equal skills. Like the skills are identical. Not necessarily. Maybe the really buffed lean guy had to like force and build his body to be a heavyweight. And the other guy is kind of soft. He lives at that body weight. He's super comfortable with it. Right. He's not stressing and pushing his body to be that heavy. He's just a naturally big dude, in which case he's got the advantage. He's totally got the, you know, Fedor Emelianenko was like that. He yeah. looked kind of doughy, and he would just. He didn't think he'd have the gas tank he did, but he could go forever. No, so it's way well, more complex at, uh, than what's, that. What's his face? That's local. That's uh, Kane Velasquez. No, 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 no. Other, uh, well, what, him too. But, yeah, him yeah. too. But I'm thinking of uh, why can't I think of his name? AKA guy right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just did his last fight. I mean, he's he has one of the best gas tanks in the game. Heavyweight, both light. Mark heavy Hunt. No, no, come on, bro. I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, starts with a C. Why can I not think of his his name right now? I can't believe I'm drawing. When you have a brain fart, it's contagious. I see yeah. that, dude. <laughs> Those are terrible. Oh. Right now. Doug, please. Oh my God. Yeah. Light heavyweight and heavyweight UFC champion. Fucking straight out of San Jose yeah. and neither. Oh, that's so terrible. It's yeah. like, well, Cormier? Thank, yeah, you. Oh, Cormier. Oh, Thank you. Daniel Cormier. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Yeah, that's a perfect example, though. French I mean, names are hard. To look remember. at the. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at look at what he looks like, dude. He does not look like he. Well, it, I'm saying it's no, way more complex than that. And then Justin made an excellent point that y y if you're good in your body, and you think like if you're a chubby guy or girl and you're crushing at your sport, don't think if you just get lean you're going to be better automatically because you're good in your body. You lose weight and change the shape of your body. Yeah. You've changed the body. Now you're not as good at moving and using that body well, I, yeah. like you were with the other one. I went through a period of this where I felt like I had to get bigger just because my coaches were telling me for the inside position, you're going to face guys that are 350, 400 pounds like coming off the block. And, you know, they're going to smash you. And so you have to get bigger in order to be able to stand your ground at this point. Yeah. And I believed them. And I thought that I had to gain at least like 30, 40 pounds or I'm, I was going to get messed up. And I did. And I did not 
play anywhere near as good as I did uh, 30 pounds lighter than that. Yeah. And I should have just listened to myself because really it was about getting stronger. It was about getting more powerful, having more snap, being there first, like predicting uh, the outcome before they even could see it. So that to me is way more advantageous. And you know, I think intuitively, you know what body weight you're, uh, you know, most efficient at. And yes. I think a lot of people kind of find that themselves. Yes. And, you know, we tend to confuse extreme aesthetics with right. health and performance. There's a wide range of body fat percentage that is healthy, right? So for a guy could be 8%. He could be as lean as 8% or as high as 18%. Uh, by the way, if you saw a picture of a guy at 8 and 18%, totally different, right? One, he looks dad bodish, uh, maybe even a little heavier than that. The other one, he looks, you got a six pack. And you could say, well, the 8% guy is healthier uh, version. Not necessarily. That range right there doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, there's a lot of other factors that determine health. And within that range right there, you could be very healthy or unhealthy. Um, go outside of that, and then you start to run into some problems. Same thing with athletic performance. You can't necessarily look at a guy or girl um, and say that they're going to be really good or bad. I mean, you can in extreme cases. Like I can look at someone and be like they're probably not going to run very fast. You know, they're <laughs> they're you know you know four foot seven or whatever. But you could. But outside of that, um, it's hard to tell. Now, there's certain things that I might look for because I'm a trainer. I might look at like someone's hip development, upper back development, that usually means that they have some good power. Is it a guarantee? No. I've seen uh, far too many times somebody who looked like they should not be powerful and fast and completely- It's, it's like the steroid right. talk. Yes. You know, it's like the steroid talk. Like, there's, you know, there's I've been wrong on both sides. So it's like, it's too hard for an outsider to speculate, oh, he's 20 pounds or 30 pounds overweight. Now, that being said, I think there's also, there's extremes, versions of this. Of there's course. definitely- there's definitely athletes that come in, they sign a big contract, yeah, and they're locked they just in. Get lazy, yeah, and they get lazy, and they come in the next season, fifteen, yeah. Start twenty pounds playing first base. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> so they come in. So they're so it's not saying that that you know everybody the size that they're all coming in at professional sports is probably the best size for them. That's not true either. There's definitely people that you know, like I said, sign contracts. They know they got a deal for the next five to ten years, and they get lazy. They get lazy on their training and their diet, and they probably put on a few extra pounds and it, had they not put on a few extra pounds, they'd be a better athlete. Right. So they're examples of both sides. Yeah. Next question is from AMR1514. Was there ever a time you felt that you failed as a personal trainer or as a leader? What did you learn from it and how did your life change? Oh gosh, I failed Jeez. as a trainer so many times, uh, especially early on. Um, and especially when I would figure out that I was doing something wrong mm. and then looking back and feeling really bad for yeah. you know, some of the stuff I did. I remember when I would first became a trainer, I was going through and reading a lot about intensity and mm. how important intensity was for training. And I remember I had this one guy that hired me, and he was this engineer um, dude, and he wanted to build muscle. And I would take all his sets to failure plus force reps because I thought, this is what triggers muscle growth, right? This is what's going to get him to, to succeed. And I remember after a, a couple months, he started to get injured, and he didn't feel good, but we kept pushing. He eventually stopped working with me, and then it was only a year later that I realized that was not the right approach. The one uh, time that this that really stands out for me, I've told this story on the podcast before um, in the past, but till this day, if I ever find this lady, I'll, I'll apologize to her. She hired me to lose weight, and her husband and her hired me, and I trained them separately. And at this time, uh, as a trainer, I would have people track their food, and I would give them macro goals, and I would test their body fat every two weeks and weigh them and take their measurements every two weeks. I was one of those trainers, right? And I would do that with her, and she was reporting to me, and I would look at her meal plans and stuff. She was reporting to me that she was following my macro advice, like to the T, and she was doing everything that I was telling her. And yet, every other week, I would test her body fat and, and look at her measurements, and at first, nothing changed, nothing changed, nothing changed, and then she started gaining weight. And so I cut her calories, changed her macros, and she gained more weight, and then I cut her calories and more, and she gained more weight. And I remember thinking to myself, this is, uh, this is impossible. And then her husband, who I also trained, told me, um, maybe he shouldn't have, but he told me, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Sally. He goes, she's not being honest on her meal plan. And so I thought to myself, okay, cool. Tomorrow when she comes in, I'm going to have one of those hardcore talks with her. I'm going to 
I'm going to call her out and, and tell her how it is and that's going to motivate her or she's never going to come back and that's that's too bad on her or whatever. So she walked in. I sat her down and I said, you're lying to me. And she said, no, I'm not. And I said a bunch of stuff. And I said, look, if you're gaining weight on this many calories, then we need to study you because you're the first human being ever on the face of the earth to create <laughs> tissue out of nothing. Such right? a dick. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm showing her the law of thermodynamics and basically showing her you're not telling me the truth. And I said, look, you're either serious or you're not. If you lie to me, you lie to yourself. The whole thing, right? Blew her out, okay? She never, she left, and I thought I was so satisfied. Oh, you know, I told her. Now she knows that, you know, now she can't lie. She knows whatever. She never came back. And I remember at first I was pleased with myself. You know, like, yeah, you know, they, if they lie to me, they're lying to themselves, and they're not serious. But about a month went by, and I kind of felt bad. And then I thought to myself and I said, you know, she was at least showing up twice a week. Mm -hmm. She'd never worked out before. Maybe she was lying because I was such a hard ass about everything. And so she felt like she couldn't be honest with me, but she was still showing up. She was still showing up. And now what I've done is I've completely ruined her experience of fitness. She finally took the step to work out, finally had the courage to come in. And she experienced a shitty experience with the trainer that told her she was a liar and that she's not good enough. And now she'll probably never work out. And I remember feeling totally like a big piece of shit afterwards. To this, still to this day, even talking about it, I feel terrible. And I, and that was probably, that's the one time that stands out the most as a time that I failed. Because later on, if I had that same client, I would make them feel comfortable with telling me that they were having a tough time with eating a particular way. And we would work through it and I'd make them feel supported. And I would be proud of the fact that they were coming in twice a week because that was more than what they were doing before. But instead, I, I probably ruined somebody uh, for at least a while in mm. terms of working out. So You definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a problem with intensity too. Yeah. yeah that was like a, a big one in the beginning because you, you think that um, – it's relatable. Like it's something that everybody really wants to like get after it, you know? And like, I come from this sports background where that was definitely the, you know, the, the, the talk of the day, it was always a mindset issue. And so I was always trying to get my clients into the mindset of wanting more and wanting more intensity and, and being able to really get after their goals. And I thought that was, if I'm not getting them in that mindset, then I'm failing, you know, like I'm, I'm not getting them to really want it and get after it. And, uh, I was training this lady and, uh, we were actually doing pretty well. Like she was showing up and, um, we were getting good, good, um, results. Uh, and I figured that, okay, you know, it, it's been at this level. Let's kind of turn it up a little bit, you know, turn the notch up a bit. And she came in one day and she, I, you know, if I was a good trainer, I would have uh, picked up on this right away. Like she's just having an off day. Like something happened outside. I don't know if it was with her uh, work or family, something like it was just off. And uh, my basic go to was, OK, well, let's push through it. You know, and so we're like working out and she's doing all these exercises. And of course, back then, you know, asshole me would combo everything, you know. And so she was like doing a lunge, but not just a lunge, a lunge with a row, you know, yeah. or like a squat with a press and like all this. So this is all before CrossFit and all that. And I was doing it with dumbbells like in place, but it was super like intense. Like it was just one thing after the next, after the next. And then she just all, like mid workout just stops. It was just bust out crying. And just starts crying and crying and crying. I'd and, love to see how you would have handled that. And I was just like, ah, and I just sat down. I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, do you need some water? Like, what, <laughs> what do you want from me? Just you get know, her like, water. Yeah. Let's get her some water. And she cried and she was like, I can't, I can't do it today. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what to, okay, let's sign out. You know, and I think she just left and then, um, and then she didn't come back. Like it, <laughs> it just was too much, you know, mentally, physically, all those things. She never came back. And then I saw her again years later, like in golds when I was uh, off on my own. And Working with a 24. good trainer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, she was just like, uh, she said, she was like, she said, that was just too much for me. And like, I just couldn't, and I'm like, I get it. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I apologize to her for yeah. that. But it was like one of those things where I just, was totally oblivious. I just, why aren't you in the mindset like I am, you know? Oh, man. So I, I failed so much as a trainer, I can't think of a single story, right, to give you, right? Uh, I'll give you a leadership one since these guys did both trainer stories. Um, and because I just shared this, you know, I did an interview the other day, 
and somebody asked a question that re- uh, was related to this. I thought it was good. Um, I had this moment uh, about 25-ish where I decided to – I had read the book One Minute Manager, which like, I read that, and then I read another book that I can't remember the name of the other book. The other book – did all this, uh, they had all this data on uh, surveys that they'd done for the Fortune 500 company CEOs and how they managed and led. And one of the things that I was taught when I got into leadership and management was, you know, you evaluate your staff. If people are not following the rules or underperforming, you coach them up, you make them better. And so that's how I looked at my team up until this point. I looked at uh, my team and, you know, this trainer is not doing as well. I need to sit him or her down and, and coach them up and make them better at what they, what they do and thought I was doing the right thing. And then I read this book, One Minute Matters, which I think everybody, if you're in a leadership role, I think you should read this book. It's a day read. <clears throat> and it really completely flipped uh, the way I led from that point on, uh, on its head. Like it totally changed the way I, I spoke to my trainers and how I led my staff. And this was in, in every aspect going forward too. And the, the premise of the book is basically instead of looking at your staff and looking at the things that they're not doing well, is make it a point to find the things that they are do, doing well and always point that out. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, but how do I, how do I measure this? Like, how do I change this way of leading and really measure if it's effective or not? And so and I have shared this on the podcast a long time ago, where I would take uh, my palm trio, right? Dating myself a little bit mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I take my palm Her stone tablet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I take my palm it trio had snake out. On it. Right, Andrew, you even it's know what that game. is? You know what a palm trio is? He doesn't no, even know, does no. he? So this was before no, I, Grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> this is the, like the first digital calendars, right? Before uh, before iPhones and stuff. And I, I put all my trainers' names in there. And then a an alarm would go off. And so, you know, Justin's name, it would pop up at two o'clock. And so what I would do Tell is me number handsome. one. Yeah, yeah. So I would yeah. <laughs> always the best. Oh, I would head over to Justin at that. I'd stop whatever it was I was doing, and I would make a point to thank him or point out something that he had done recently. It must I have did. been tough for Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't like that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Let me get back to work. So I did this, and I and I did it very consistently um, for a couple months before I recognized uh, what it, how powerful it was. And I, I, I talk about the moment that I knew, like, holy shit, like this was like a game changer for me. Right there's that that saying that we use all the time. Uh, a kid named Anthony comes walking into my office. This is like two months after I've been doing this. He walks in my office, and he just starts telling me all the things that he he hasn't done right, Adam. And he was one of my good trainers, right? I need to get caught up on my files and I'm so sorry this. I've had finals at school and he starts telling me, giving me all the excuses why he hasn't done certain things and why he'll be better. And and it, you know, opened up the opportunity for me to say, okay, well, you know, let's work on this or let me help you here and, and coach up. And like he walks out, I thought, man, that was really strange. And I'm like, why did he do that? And I realized that I had missed his, you know, walking over to him and saying what a good job he was doing for that past week. So the first, he was the first guy, uh, first staff member that I had let seven days go by without walking over and telling them what a good job they were doing. And it blew my mind that he had come to me with everything that he was doing wrong. And it was at that moment that I realized how powerful that was. Because I know that when you tell somebody to, to, to correct something or you coach them up, when you, when you come at them and you tell them, you point out something they're doing wrong, you're, it's like a one in 10 chance that it actually sinks in and they adjust and they change things. Maybe you've got somebody who is very self-aware and they do that. Most people get defensive, whether they act defensively or internally, they put a wall up and they don't receive any information versus when someone comes to you and says, hey, Adam, I've got a problem or, hey, I'm not doing a good job. They're actually admitting that they they have an issue or they're not doing a good job. They're looking to be coached up or they're looking for help. That way of leading completely changed for me. And that was a mistake that I did for years leading up to that point. And when I made that switch, I never had to work nearly as hard as I worked for the first five years as a leader, and I was two to five times more successful going forward. You know, that's really smart because it's uh, it's actually human psychology. So uh, Dr. John Gottman, by the way, if, if you want really, really good uh, relationship advice for you and your spouse or your partner, 
um, look up the books and research by Dr. John Gottman. Um, and you know, without going into too much depth, his research has been duplicated many times over, proving the stuff that he originally uh, came out with. So it's 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 legit. And one thing that they say is that there's this ratio of good to negative. Uh, there's this good to negative ratio that couples that last for long periods of time or the the winners or whatever he would call them that they would have. And it's five to one. Right. So they thought going into the research that one to one would be good. Well, you know, at least half the time the the comments should be positive to balance out at least the other half of the negative. But no, they found that couples that succeed were five to one. So if you're criticizing or complaint or have complaints to your spouse or your partner about like you didn't do this, you didn't do that, hey, do that, you did that wrong. What they found is that there needs to be five, it's five times as many positive things to balance out every one of those negative things. And it's just human behavior. It's so that human. so that actually is, I, I can't remember the book, I wish I remember the book, but that's similar to the survey that I read, right? So the survey that I read in the, the previous book before Women and Manager showed that the 500 most successful CEOs of Fortune 500 companies they were they were asked a question like, as far as positive affirmation with your staff on a scale of one to five, five being perfect, one being terrible, mm -hmm. what would you rank yourself as as far as that type of a, a leader and a CEO? And of course, all these great CEOs rated themselves at four or five, right? So they, mm -hmm. it came out to an average of like four point two or four point five, like a really high number. They all rated themselves. They asked all the employees of those CEOs the exact same question if they're leader, and the score came out to be like two point two. So the takeaway that I got from that was that, as because at that point in my career, I thought I was one of these guys already. I'm a very positive person. I, I do a good job. I, I, or at least I felt like I do a good job of congratulating my staff or pointing out the things they do well. I was not a negative leader whatsoever. So I, but when I read that, it made me go, wow, even as much as I think I do it, I am not doing it nowhere near enough to make that ratio positive for the person yep. who's receiving mm -hmm. it. So in the book, One Minute Manager, it doesn't teach to do what I did. I just, the information that I learned from that first bit of research, which is similar to what you're talking yeah. about, and then the One Minute uh, Manager strategy, that what I came up with was my own thing, right? That was my own way of kind of measuring that because I realized, wow, I think I already do that, but if these guys are running these massive companies, this is what their staff is. What does my staff think about me? Got to be the same thing. It's your perception. It's yeah. all about the perception and human behavior. It's like a negative comment uh, weighs heavily, uh, and positive comments don't weigh nearly as heavy, heavily. So you have to have kind of this offset ratio. We, we're Jessica and I were talking about some friends of ours who are. They just had a baby, so they're having you know some some challenges in the relationship. By the way, every couple I've ever known mm -hmm. who just had a baby mm -hmm. has challenges. So that's you know number one, that's totally normal. But the I guess the wife was telling the husband something he wasn't doing or whatever, and he responded. And he said, "Can you tell me something I'm doing right?" Ooh. And I'm like, "Well, that's Ooh. he he's probably he's probably feeling and it might not be true." But the negative to positive ratio feels way Skewed. off. Skewed. Yeah, yeah, so he feels mm -hmm. like all I'm doing is everything it's, wrong. It happens. Tell it, me something I'm doing right type of deal, you know? Yeah, it's an easy thing to happen. I mean, that's if you're just focused on that and you're looking for it, you're going to find it. Yeah. You, you know, and so it's really just about both sort of reframing their ideas around it and, and trying to focus on the positive. Well, that's the other thing that I found really powerful about leading this way was – if I did that, Anthony was the first example of when I went, aha, like, whoa, I, I'm on to something. Mm -hmm. And and then what I realized going forward is because there's time, there's definitely times where you catch something that you've got to, you've got to nip it in the bud or you got to say something immediately. I can't wait mm -hmm. for them to come to me. And, but what I found, because I did so much work into making sure that everybody on that team was getting heard from positive things from me every single week, multiple times. That when finally they did fuck up, you know, five, six, seven weeks later, they'd already heard me talk about how great they are 15 right. times. That when I dropped the hammer that one time, it wasn't like, oh man, Adam's always ragging on me. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. I've already told you all these great things that you're doing. You're not doing this. That's not great. This is not a great thing right here. So yeah. it became way more powerful when I did come over and correct or when I did come over and say that, point out something that they didn't do well. And it just had so much more weight when I had made an effort to go out of my way to keep continuing and saying good, positive things to these people. Awesome. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well. So come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. We love answering people's DMs. We love interacting with our audience. Come find us. 
You can find Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Drove and we there were no parking and then you finally found it. We were with you, Adam. You were driving your truck. Mm-hmm. You finally found a parking spot. Didn't notice that it was a electric vehicle <laughs> only. Uh, a Whole Foods but, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an electric vehicle only parking spot. And they had like the they had the electric <laughs> pump or whatever. He puts it in in like, his window. In his w-